the teapot effect. How many times have you tried to pour in some tea from a teapot or cup while preventing it to dribble over the side? Apparently, if one pours the tea too gently, the tea will dribble around the side or the spout. This is called the teapot effect. There is a physical explanation for it and it has nothing to do with your inability to pour tea in a cup. In fluid dynamics, phenomena can generally be divided into two regimes, namely the small-scale flow regime and the large-scale flow regime. In the small-scale flow regime the flow is small enough for surface effects of the fluid to affect the motion of the fluid. While in the large-scale flow regime the motion of the fluid is ruled by the inertia of the fluid due to the large flow rate. To make a quantifiable distinction between these two regimes, physicists make use of the Weber and the Reynolds numbers. The Weber number is a dimensionless number which gives a measure between the fluid's inertia and its surface tension. While Reynolds number is also a dimensionless number, which gives a measure between the fluid's inertia and its viscosity. When the Weber and Reynolds numbers are much bigger than one, the fluid dynamics are described by the large-scale flow regime. And when they are around the order of one, the low-scale flow regime will describe the physics of the fluid. Now consider the flow of the fluid from the spout of the teapot. In this case, according to Reynolds and Weber the numbers, the dynamics of the fluid are dominated by the large-scale flow regime. But looking at the stream of fluid flowing from the spout, one clearly observes that the fluid is being deflected by the spout. Thus surface effects do appear to have an effect in the large-scale flow regime. Many researchers have tried to tackle this paradox and some have succeeded in partially solving the paradox for special cases of the teapot effect. This paradox was unsolved until a French research group solved it by taking a solid fluid interaction phenomenon into account. This phenomenon is called wettability. Wettability is the ability of a solid to reduce the surface tension of a fluid and thus making the fluid spread out more over its surface. It is measured by the angle the surface of a liquid makes with the surface of the solid at the separation point of the liquid and solid. This angle is called the equilibrium angle due to being the angle at which the surface energies are at equilibrium. The surface energies are the surface energy between the fluid and the air, the surface energy between liquid and solid, and the surface energy between solid and air. If the solid is hydrophobic, the equilibrium angle is bigger than 90 degrees. And if the solid is hydrophilic, the equilibrium angle is smaller than 90 degrees. Now taking wettability into account one can explain the teapot effect. This is a photo of the actual spout used by the French research group. Let's take a closer look at the spout. Here is a photo made during the operation of the setup. The water has been colored with a fluorescent dye to make it visible in the photo. This is a schematic view of the spout during operation. At this scale, one ignores the effect of gravity on the fluid. The fluid flows over the spout as a thin film of thickness E0. Knowing that wettability is a fluid-solid contact phenomenon one also has to take the spout's geometry into account. Here the roundness of the spout is described by the parameter Ri. Furthermore, delta phi zero is the angle the stream gets deflected, and delta phi wet is the angle the fluid keeps making contact with the spout. C is the curvature of the meniscus, which forms between the stream and the spout. Now let's make the teapot effect more quantifiable. 
The adherence force acts as a centripetal force, taking the stream of fluid of its natural course, thus altering the direction of the momentum p. Due to momentum conservation p and p accent are equal in magnitude. The difference in momentum is caused by the centripetal force, and the only force that can act as a centripetal force is the adherence force. Thus the centripetal and adherence force have to be equal. Now if the velocity of the fluid is high, the deflection of the stream will be small. The centripetal force will keep working on the stream until it detaches from the spout. The point at which the stream detaches is at the angle delta phi zero. The adherence force is roughly given by the surface times the pressure change in the meniscus time the portion of the spout the meniscus is attached to. A more detailed derivation of the adherence force is given in the original article of the French research group and will not be discussed here. Combining these results give the depends of the deflection angle on the Weber number and the equilibrium angle. F is a form factor that depends on the geometrical variables of the spout in the stream. Now if the velocity v of the fluid is small the teapot will start to dribble. This can be understood as the stream having a deflection angle of 90 degrees. In other words, the centripetal force will act on the stream around the whole tip of the spout. Now introducing the adherence force and equating the two forces, one finds the following relation. With this relation one can estimate a critical Weber number at which the teapot will start to dribble, given a equilibrium angle. This graph shows the dependence of the deflection angle on the flow rate of the fluid. The big red arrow shows the increase of the wettability of the used spout. So the black curve corresponds to the least hydrophilic spout, while the red curve corresponds to the most hydrophilic. Although there are no fits drawn through the data points, the curves show a root-like dependence, indicating that the derived results are most likely correct. Thus with these equations one can design teapots which are dribble-proof and keep our tables clean.